Good evening and uh, welcome to uh, Jubilee for All from uh, Holborn West Church and a very warm welcome to everyone and uh, a very happy new year to you. It's uh, great to see some of you on screen. I know that some of you will be joining us uh, over the course of the week. Um, I hope uh, Christmas went uh, well for you and uh, New Year as well with uh, all the strangeness of it. And of course, we continue in a period of uh, strangeness and with uh, various uh, restrictions on what we can do at this present time. But thank God for uh, the technology we have and the opportunity to connect with one another in this very special way. The theme this evening is longing. Um, and longing, I'm sure, is something we're possibly more aware of or alert to than perhaps we ever have been, because there's things we, we long for, uh, just fairly simple things, just being able to speak to people uh, face to face, uh, indoors and uh, meet and have a casual tea or coffee and, and, and whatever, and so many other things that we long for what we're having to kind of wait for uh, in the present time. So that is the theme we're going to be exploring this evening. And longing it was very much something articulated uh, by different uh, characters in the Bible stories. And we hear about it in one of the Psalms, uh, where the psalmist says, as the deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. That's from Psalm 42. And so we rejoice that we can praise together this evening. And we're going to uh, hear, and you're welcome to sing in your respective homes, uh, the opening hymn, We Are Here to Praise You. Let us draw near to God, let us pray. God, 
what is life about? I mean, I do my best, I work hard, well, most of the time, at relationships, at trying to contribute in work, at home, at church and in the community. I care for family and friends. Sure, I slip up sometimes, everyone does, but I pick myself up and try to do better the next time. God, what is life about? Sometimes there seems no purpose to it at all. A never-ending treadmill, and I'm the hamster. It's the same routine, and often that's just fine, but sometimes, sometimes it's just not enough. Is there more? God, I don't know what's missing. I'm not sure what I need, what I really desire. So show me, God, come close and ease that empty ache gnaws away inside me. That longing for, ful for fullness and fulfilment in life. That deep need to belong and be loved as I am. Loving God embrace us and welcome us at this moment, at this time. And may we be simply strengthened and renewed in your loving presence and in fellowship with one another. Bless us as a church family as we seek to hear your call and respond to your call in our individual lives. And may we be encouraged and strengthened to put our trust and faith in you in all times. In Christ's name, amen. Now the scripture readings uh, this evening are just a few verses from uh, different parts of the Bible. The book in the Old Testament, the Song of Solomon, is a, a wonderfully romantic um, expression or poem um, and in it we read I am my beloved's and his desire is for me and in Matthew's gospel and Mark and Luke's gospel and we may have heard that in the joint service reflection uh, this morning and a voice from heaven said this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased and in Isaiah chapter 62, as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. So in several parts of the scriptures, we have a kind of longing, a desire, but there is also a sense that Christ, God, meets our desires and he satisfies them in a way that nothing else can do. So we're going to be exploring this whole theme of, of longing, of searching uh, in the course of the service. But we're going to continue in our worship with um, a, a beautiful um, sung version of the Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water. And uh, Jamie is going to be accompanying that uh, to, for us.
we had a, a meeting last week of the uh, Jubilee planning group and we were discussing various things and among them uh, was the season of Lent and the word Lent, what does the word Lent mean? And so we heard different things about it and um, in some ways the actual word is connected with length, with a period of time uh, from winter leading to spring, but of course, in it, from the religious understanding, it in, involves a lot more than the length of time. But certainly it involves a period of waiting, waiting for the, the joy, the release, the celebration of Easter. And uh, as I think my, my colleague Robert uh, Smith from uh, Rubeslaw Parish Church uh, reflected uh, this morning, in some ways, it's quite strange. We have a period of Advent, of, of waiting. Um, we celebrate Christmas, and then shortly after that, we're back into another period of waiting, uh, the longing for the joyful news of the resurrection. Of course, these are just um, church um, calendar things. In a sense, we celebrate the birth of Christ every day of the year and the resurrection of Jesus Christ every day and at night of the year. And if we're good Calvinist Presbyterians, every day we celebrate Christmas and Easter. Um, but it's interesting that there's quite an emphasis in church traditions on these periods of leading towards, of waiting, of anticipation, of preparing. Advent, waiting, and the arrival of the baby child the one who has been promised to be the Messiah. And we reflect the period of Advent and prophets, promises, and then the fulfillment of these in the baby born. Lent is a period of waiting and preparation. And then there is the joyful celebration of Easter. It often is accompanied with things like fasting, prayer, trying to focus our minds and spirits eh, on Christ's life and ministry and teaching. And then there is the, the finding and the discovering of Jesus. So longing and searching and discovering and finding are all part of life. And they're there for us in every point of our lives, um, from the day we're born uh, to the day we die. And uh, I'd like to share with you one or two uh, reflections on the theme of longing, which I hope you find helpful. This first one is from Elizabeth Bassett from her book, The Bridge is Love. Life is a search for this something, a search for something or someone to give meaning to our lives, to answer the question, who am I? Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? There are countless ways in which the longing can be expressed by poets and painters, musicians and dancers, and by so many of those whose talent is for living and loving in awe and worship. Perhaps the whole of life is concerned with this yearning. Nothing can be left out, but it carries us on into death and beyond when we dare to hope that we shall come face to face with the source of all our longing. And I'd like to read a paragraph by William Barclay on his commentary in the Gospel of John. And I think a great gift that uh, Barclay uh, a well-known uh, New Testament scholar and commentator has is he kind of earths things very well. He, he brings things down to a, an earthly reality. They're not pie in the sky. He, he puts it very clearly uh, to us. And he says this, it would be well if every now and again in life we were to ask ourselves, what am I looking for? What am I trying to extract from life? What's my aim and goal? If I am honest, what in the depth of my heart am I really trying to get out of life? There are some who are searching for security. 
They would like a position which is safe, money enough to meet the needs of life and to put some past for the time when work is done, a material security which will take away the essential worry about material things. It is not a wrong aim, but it is a low aim and an inadequate thing to which to direct all life. For in the last analysis, there is no safe security in the uncertainty of the chances and the changes of this life. There are some who are searching for what they would call a career, for power, for prominence, for prestige, for a place to fit the talents and the abilities they believe themselves to have, for an opportunity to do the work they believe themselves capable of doing. Again, it's not a bad aim. If it be directed by motives of personal ambition, it can be a bad aim. If it be directed by motives of the service of our fellow human beings, it can be a high aim. But it is not enough, for its horizon is limited by time and by the world. There are some who are searching for some kind of peace, for something to enable them to live at peace with themselves and at peace with God and at peace with one another. That is the search for God. That is the aim that only Jesus can meet and supply. And just one uh, last uh, reflection from someone uh, who lived a considerable uh, length of time ago, Anselm of Canterbury. And uh, that, sorry, I'm, uh, I've got a strange mind, but when I saw the title, Where Are You? It made me think of a, a, a Frank Sinatra song where there's a searching, a longing for this uh, love of, of someone. Uh, some of Sinatra's uh, songs are, are quite uh, deep expressions of, of longing that they're not all kind of uh, cheerful ones by, by any means. But anyway, um, often the association with the, the love of another, whether it be a human being, is also sometimes connected with the searching love for God. And uh, let me just share some of this from Anselm, which I hope you find helpful. Come then, Lord, my God, Teach my heart where and how to seek you, where and how to find you. Lord, if you are not present here, where, since you are absent, shall I look for you? And then in Anselm's reflection, he considers various places that a person might look to seek and to find God. And I'll just read the closing part of this reflection. Let me discern your light, whether it be from afar or from the depths. Teach me to seek you and reveal yourself to me as I seek, because I can neither seek you if you do not teach me how, nor find you unless you reveal yourself. Let me seek you in desiring you. Let me desire you in seeking you. Let me find you in loving you. Let me love you in finding you. I acknowledge, Lord, and I give thanks that you have created your image in me so that I may remember you, think of you, love you. But this image is so effaced and worn away by vice, so darkened by the smoke of sin, that it cannot do what it was made to do unless you renew it and reform it. I do not try, Lord, to attain your lofty heights, because my understanding is in no way equal to it. But I do desire to understand your truth a little, that truth that my heart believes and loves. For I do not seek to understand so that I may believe, but I believe so that I may understand. For I believe this also, that unless I believe, I shall not understand. So these are some words to consider and reflect on, on the theme of longing. So I'd like to express my thanks to um, 
Alan Smith, who, who drew uh, my attention to uh, a prayer that the moderator of the General Assembly, uh, Martin Fair, has put together. On a Sunday evening, um, just now, there's a seven o'clock uh, time on the, on the Church of Scotland website, you can join in. And he's issued this prayer, which you can find on the website. And I'm, I'm going to use that uh, in a moment. And uh, just before uh, I do that, I'd just also like to draw your attention to what we're planning to do between now and Easter. You might be thinking, those who are very sharp and acute, that Lent is only 40 days. Well, just because of the extended lockdown, we're having an extended Lent. What do you think of that? Don't worry, it's not all grim, it's not all bad. But uh, it's because there's a wonderful book here um, entitled The Grace-Filled Wilderness. And it's a journey through Lent and it's written by Magdalene Smith. And uh, the titles and headings, um, we as a, a planning group thought were all very good. And I'm sure there's so many of these things uh, we can relate to. Um, our sense of identity or not, name, loneliness, solitude, um, our occupation, how do we occupy ourselves, the theme of freedom and things like boundary, safety, denial, um, anxiety and uh, pain, hope, joy and grace and different themes like that that we thought we would build our services, services around. So. We're just in the process of putting that together and you'll get the details of that uh, soon, but we're going to be kind of uh, kicking off on, on that series uh, from next Sunday. Um, but let us now draw near to God. Uh, let us pray. And I'll bring some of these things that have been uh, raised uh, for prayer before I read the, the prayer from Martin Fair. Loving God, we praise and thank you for the opportunity to meet this evening. We praise and thank you that you are a strong God, but beyond that, a caring and compassionate God, who looks upon people in their distress and in their depths, but more than that, comes and draws alongside them. And we think of people known to us personally, and perhaps whom we've heard of, uh, who are going through particularly challenging situations. We think of people facing the challenges of fuel poverty, struggling to pay for their bills. We think of people in the coldness and harshness of winter, um, maybe having difficulties with their heating and waiting for repairs. We remember people in different countries living in refugee camps and the harshness that they are enduring. Loving God, we also think over this season of time, people who have maybe had accidents or people who have gone through illness and are maybe awaiting treatment and with the greater uncertainties because of the NHS also having to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. So we uplift to you in our hearts and in our spirits, those who are in need of your healing touch, especially at this time. And we take a moment in silence to remember them and we clothe them with our prayers, with our love, entrusting them in your love, in your healing presence. Lord God, as we look ahead to the season of Lent and we think of the particular experiences of wilderness that we are going through in our own society and across the world, we join in this prayer. Living God, be with us in the desert place and renew us as those who are made in your image. Hear us as we call to you and answer our cry, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
living God, be with us in the desert place and meet us in the place of suffering. Hear us as we call to you and bring healing to the broken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, be with us in the desert place and come beside those who are sorrowing. Hear us as we call to you and have compassion upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, be with us in the desert place and lead us to the places of discovery and rediscovery. Hear us as we call to you and reshape the pattern of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, be with us in the desert place. And may we know that Christ is with us. Hear us as we call to you. And lead us to the place where we hear your word of affirmation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for uh, joining this evening and uh, we hope to see you and uh, hear you uh, next Sunday. And as I say, once we have the programme a bit more uh, firmed up, that will be um, emailed out to you. But we are now going to hear our uh, closing hymn this evening. Um, it's, uh, I think it uh, originates from Malawi and it is Night Has Fallen. Night has fallen Night has fallen, God our Maker, guard us sleeping. Darkness now has come, darkness now has come, God our Maker, guard us sleeping. We are with you, Lord. We are with you, Lord. God, our Maker, guard us sleeping. You have kept us, Lord. You have kept us, Lord. God, our Maker, guard us sleeping. See your children, Lord, see your children, Lord. God, our Maker, guard us sleeping. Keep us in your love, keep us in your love. God, our Maker, guard us sleeping. Now we go to rest, now we go to rest. God, our Maker, guard us sleeping. Well, thank you to members of the Jubilee Music Group for singing that uh, hymn for us this evening. Let us close with the blessing. In our lives and our longing God, in our seeking and our searching Christ, in the depths of our desire, Holy Spirit, God three in one, loving us, offering fulfillment for us, leading us on. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 
be with you this night and evermore. Amen.